Today I'll be doing a summary of my favorite book of all time. You heard that right. My favorite book, number one of all time, and it's called Make It Stick, The Science of Successful Learning. My name is Rafael Testai. Why is this book my number one book of all time? Because it teaches you how to learn and extract and retain the information from all the subsequent classes and books you'll read after this one. It teaches you study techniques, how to not trick yourself to thinking that you know something when you don't, and several things I'm gonna go over. I have a sketchboard that I neatly made for you so you can visualize all these main concepts. I made some flashcards for you, which is what the book recommends, so I made flashcards for the book that recommends flashcards for better learning. All right, so let's dive into my sketch right here. And I actually got this idea of making sketches for the concepts that I learned out of this book. The sketch note handbook, highly recommended. What, what's in it for me is that I'm in this journey of life and I wanna be, I'm a learner for life and I wanna achieve mastery in the most efficient way. So really sharpening my saw and studying how to better learn is one of the first building blocks that we should all do before we take on a journey of trying to read multiple books or we all, I mean, most people, a lot of people have goals as to how many books they want to read weekly or annually. And if you really sharpen your saw, you're going to be able to retain that information better. So this is how. All right, so here we go. Just follow the red pen that I'm going to narrate and just follow that pen and you'll, you'll be able to follow along. One of the main concepts is that you want to build on previous knowledge. So you got this stack cubes here on the right. And let's say that you know a basic math concept. Whenever you learn new concept in math, maybe you somehow tie it and build upon the previous knowledge. So you're anchoring that knowledge. And that's how your brain makes the connections and you can build on it. And if you continue the process, you can reach infinite learning according to the book. See how I made the infinite little dots and the infinite sign? I thought that was pretty cool. Learning should be hard and challenging. Connections are being made in your mind. So when you encounter obstacles and it takes a hard time for the answer to come up, it, it's a good thing. So you're on the right track if that happens. By the way, the, the term is called elaborate learning of these building blocks. What do you do if you wanna learn and, and study for a long time, long periods of time, but you feel like you're burning out? You, you read a page, you don't even remember what you just read, you're going through the videos for your classes, you can't really listen to the professor. What do you do? The answer is you wanna interleave, that's the word, interleave subjects. So here I have a visual for this. The three main subjects that I study right now are calculus, mechanical design, and physics. Another reason, other than wanting to stay awake and more receptive to the information, is that when you interleave the subjects, your subconscious mind it's still active. So if you're studying calculus and you switch to mechanical design, mechanical design means gears and building things, mechanisms, that's what it means. Um, the, the calculus is going to be in the back of your mind still working. And also, according to research, the book is several pages long and there are several studies that are cited. The research shows that you should switch subjects whenever you're feeling the hang of it. When you're just about to get it, you snap your finger, you switch the subject. This seems totally counterintuitive. It seems disruptive. I totally understand, but the research shows that is the best way to attain new knowledge. So that's a technique that I've been implementing and it works. So you want to interleave two or more subjects. That also gives you a lot more stamina. It keeps your mind fresh. So that's why I drew this visual here of me here with the glasses, reading a calculus book, going to the physics book, then going to the mechanical design book or lectures or studying. And I made a track. I used to run track. Broke the mile record, by the way. I used to run track. So I put at 24 hours, you just keep on running like the Energizer Bunny. And you're not getting tired. So interleave the subjects to not get tired and absorb the information better. Now we're going to come across probably the main theme of the book, which is spaced repetition and utilizing flashcards. That's the key. The key is that it should be hard, guys. You should be really be, uh, the information should not be 
mindlessly being repeated when you go over flash code. You see this a lot with college students and no one has taught you this before. So hopefully you watching this video, now you're learning this. And I thought this was pretty insightful. There's a, the right way of doing flashcards should not be mindless. And I got this little guy drooling here. Um, you should not just be mindlessly going through flashcards in a quick fashion. You should be, you should be stuck sometimes as you go through a flashcard. And you should have three stacks of flashcards. And my favorite technique is to have assigned colors for the background of the flashcard. Because I use Google Slides for the flashcards that I made, which are in the description of this video. Like for instance, this one, I put a background of orange. You may ask why? Well, the background signifies how often I should study that flashcard because it determines if I knew the flashcard or not, if I struggle with it. So a red flashcard means that I didn't get the right answer. So I should study that daily. An orange flashcard is every other day and then white monthly. And you can see this concept in the illustration here on the right. And the book says that you want to space out your learning. If you do all your learning, if you cram it, yes, 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 every day you're studying the same flashcards, you're not going to make it very far. You want to do what's called space repetition that I mentioned before. You got to make it farther. You got to make it to the top of the hill. Where you're going to find the Ferrari, the mansion, enlightenment, all the things you want. If you have space repetition, you're going to make it farther. And you're going to remember things better when you do this. So I put the turtle here as an analogy to take your time. Uh, it may seem counterintuitive to not study the same thing every day, but you want to switch. Yes, no, yes, no. And that's how you're going to make it the farther. By the way, that's my Instagram name. Feel free to add me. When should you study? The best time to study. This is a really cool technique is right after your lecture or the video or the book that you just finished, stop and for 10 minutes, take out a blank sheet of paper and write down everything you remember. For the first two minutes, you're gonna flow. You're just gonna keep on writing and writing. But when you get around the two minute mark, you're gonna find out that you run out of things to write down. You're just not gonna remember anymore, but hang in there. Push through the discomfort because around minute three and four, more things will start coming to you and you'll continue to fill the page. When it comes to the 10 minute mark, look, this is a little eye, look at what you wrote and then compare it to your class notes and see where are the gaps in your knowledge. And those are the things you need to study and focus more on. You also want to reflect and try to pinpoint the biggest topics and concepts that were shared in the lecture or in the video that you watch. And you want to relate it and build it and ask yourself, how does this build on what you already know? Come back to the pyramid here. In essence, that's the summary of the book. These were my first notes, so I'm not as tidy as you may think. So I translated this onto the right. It looks much better as you can see. And the flashcards are free. They're Google Slides. So both Android and Apple devices have this in a free app. And the Q on the top left signifies as a question and the A signifies as an answer. So link is in the description below. You can flip through the flashcards and quiz yourself. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe, and why not share on social? Until next time.